How are we doing, guys? So I'm going to, have to apologise for the poor lighting. Obviously, because I've got this right above my head, it might affect the picture. But I've recently had a uh, comment or a request to do a video on LED strip lighting. Now, I'm not fully prepared, but as luck would have it, I do have some bits that I've got for a job coming up that I can actually try and help explain some of this to you. So one of the options when it comes to LED lighting is I prefer cob lights. Cob lights basically gives you an uninterrupted street, uh, a light beam. Rather than just individual LEDs, a cob light will give you a strip of light rather than little dots. So this is one version of them, guys. So these you can buy on Amazon, anywhere like that, pretty much. So basically in the box, you're gonna get your, your coil of light which is uninterrupted. This is like I say, this is actually for another job I've got coming up, so it's all unopened. So when I say cob light, as you can see there, it's got like a yellow streak there. That's your light. There's hundreds of little LEDs in there. And when they light up, it gives you an un unbroken line. I'll plug it in and show you what I mean. Obviously they come with a remote and a controller. So that's what's in this packet. So these are what's called plug and play, basically, guys. So you've got your, your receiver for your remote, and obviously your remote. Now these, nine times out of 10, can be cut to length, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so if you look here, on the front, you'll see where they've got little bits of copper. Now normally, you can actually cut them on that, and then you can strip that back and you can solder joints in, so you can extend these or take them around corners or do whatever you want. So that's a, that's a, that's for, that's a video for another day. So I just want to show you what cob light looks like. So on this particular pack, it has a separate transformer and a power lead. On some of these, you will get it as the main plug will be the transformer, and you won't get this block. It'll just be a big chunky plug. So in between the transformer and your lights. Sorry guys, it's Halloween, so kids are ringing my doorbell. So that's the receiver. So you'll put the receiver first, then your, your, then your cob light. So let me just plug this in. So, so I'm not very well prepared for this, so just bear with me. So I'll just plug it in and I'll show you what a cob light looks like. So, just turn, where's the remote, there it is. So these are cool white. Now as you can see from that strip there, it is just an unbroken line of light. Close up you will see the individual dots, but when it's under like something like that, as you can see, it doesn't give you little dots, it gives you just a clear bead of light. So that's cob lighting. And this is the plug and play version. Now there are, there is another version of this, and the other version will require, so I just turn them off, will require a few spurs. So what you would do is say, for example, with this socket here, you would take a feed out of that socket and you'd put it into a few spur. You'd come out of that few spur into something like this. So this is a transformer or a driver, sometimes it's called. So you'd have your power go into one end and your LED power would come out the other end. And if you're doing something like wall units, for example, say you've got a set of wall units on this side with a break and then a set of wall units on this side, what you'd have to do, you'd come out of your fuse spur to above your first set of wall units, you'd have one of these. You'd also then take a cable from there into the ceiling or under the units, so everyone would do it, and you'd bring another power, another power lead up to your other set of wall units where you'd have a second driver. So you actually need a driver per set of lights. So if you've got three different brakes, you'd need three drivers. Or if you want to do one lot of wall units and one lot of plinth lights, you'd still need two drivers and you'd need to bridge the power supply from the transformer. So you go transformer to one driver, then out that, from that driver back to another driver. So you wouldn't go into the input, you'd go, you'd go into the input and then you come out of the input for the other tail. It's very hard to explain without actually having a, an actual rig set up showing you. So that basically you come out, your out of your fuse spur into the input of one driver and then you link from the input to another input for another driver. Then you have the output from each driver going to your LEDs. 
And again, depending on how many different brakes you've got in that circuit, you'd need a driver per set of lights. Or like I'm doing at the moment with the Ren Kitchen, we're doing an under, under worktop light. So what I've done is I've routed that 10 mil slot all the way around the perimeter of the worktops with links. And then what I'm gonna do is I will then stick this in that track that I've put. And what I will do is carefully, I will carefully cut into the tape up to the LED strip, not through the, not through the LED strip, just up to it. Cut a little V out and that will allow me to basically bend the LED cob around that corner and get me an uninterrupted line of LED. And if it ever goes wrong, all I've got to do is pull it out or replace the transformer, buy another set. It's very rare the actual LEDs will go wrong, very rare. It's more likely going to be your power pack that will go on this situation. And this is a quick and easy maintenance free way. Um, in the case of the Ren Kitchen, um, the light switch was on the other side of the kitchen. And ideally, if you're going to have switched under cabinet lighting, you'd normally, or ideally, you'd like to have both your main light, like this one, and your under cabinet lights on a double switch next to each other. So you flip between them without having to move around the kitchen to turn them on. Because the last thing you want to do is walk in your door, turn your main light on, then walk to the other side of the kitchen to turn a few spur on to turn the other lights on. You want them all controlled at one place. So in the case of the Ren kitchen, where we just what we are working on at the moment, it would mean holes in the ceiling, running cables across, chasing down the wall, and it was a massive expense for the client. So we went with this option, with the remote control, because this remote control, you could just bit of double-sided tape next to the light switch, walk in, and you've got a dimmer control there, and it's all by the same position, and it just saves a little bit of time, a little bit of faffing about, and you get to turn them on and off at a position where you're comfortable. Um, I'm hoping that's answered your questions, guys. If you do have any more questions, you know, leave a comment and I will do my best to uh, answer those questions. Um, I can't always do it. Recently, I was asked about worktops as well. Now, I've done loads of videos on worktops and how to and how to do your cuts. But the problem at the moment is a lot of the worktops I'm fitting are square edge, which means I can do a butt joint, which I've done quite a few videos on. But I haven't done a sole video just on how to do the worktop. So... We are doing a kitchen in a few weeks, and I will prioritise showing you exactly how I do the worktops, the cuts, the mitres, the whole shebang. Um, but I won't be doing a mason mitre again because it will be square edge worktops, so I can do a butt joint. You don't get um, ball nose worktops, that's the ones with the rounded edge. You don't get them very often these days because they're a bit outdated. So what's a, ma a mason mitre where you have the swept 45 degree cut into it so that they butt in you don't do that very often now because you just don't need to with a square edge worktop because you can do a butt joint the mason mitre is purely because you've got this rounded edge like here if i did a butt joint obviously that round wouldn't continue around so you do the mason mitre just to make rounded edge worktops work but like i say i will do an in-depth video on how i fit the worktop so i would try my best to do it as much detail as possible just give me another couple of weeks because it's going to be not next week, probably the week after when I'm doing the worktops because we rip out Tuesday. I've got Sparky's electricians going in Wednesday, Thursday. Then we're back there Friday to start installing. So it'll probably be midweek the following week before I do the worktops. But again, guys, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I will do my best to do you a video and explain in detail. So... Hopefully this has answered your questions on the cob lights and the LED strip lights. If you do have any more questions, just hit me up in the comments. And I'll see you soon, guys. Don't forget, like, share, follow and subscribe. And we'll see you in a bit.